Hey everyone, it's Coach Matt over here at Primal Athlete Training Center, www.primalatc.com. Coming to you today to talk a little bit about progressions when teaching the squat to athletes. Now, this comes from a few different questions, guys. We always get questions here at Primal that come to the email and on the YouTube channel about overcrowded weight rooms in high school. Basically, you've got a very large team of beginner athletes, intermediate athletes, and advanced athletes athletes who have all spent time in the weight room and when it comes to the training there doesn't seem to be enough actual equipment in the weight room to get everybody in and out in a timely fashion. So we get a lot of people who ask what can I do when I have a small weight room and a large team and also we're going to kill two birds with one stone and answer another question which is how do you progress in the squat from somebody who has never squatted before to an advanced squat. Well, here's the deal. When you have athletes in your weight room who are beginners, they are not and should not be starting by squatting a 45 pound bar with weight on it on their back. They need to learn the basic techniques and they do that with things like body weight uh, squats and goblet style squats. So, the beginner athletes are going to start with those beginner movements without using the power rack without using a squat rack. The intermediate athletes are going to be sometimes doing a heavier goblet squat and then moving up to a double kettlebell or a double dumbbell style squat. They might even be moving on to a box squat with double kettlebells or with double dumbbells. That's the intermediate guys. So again, not taking up a lot of equipment. They can use the benches or plyo boxes as their boxes to squat down onto while the advanced athletes are doing the basic, you know, your standard box squat or using any other type of squatting bar that you have in the weight room. All right, so let's go through this. So the basic progressions that we use here at Primal for these exercises to teach the squat, beginner athletes will start with a body weight squat. Now, body weight squat, just like it sounds, you're squatting down to parallel or a little bit below parallel, standing back up with good form and good technique. We do our body weight squats not only during our warm up, but we also do them for beginners, people who have never squatted before, people who are just starting out and have form and technique issues. They will start with a body weight squat. Once they go from a body weight squat and their form and their technique looks good, we will put them into a goblet style squat. Now, a goblet squat, let's grab a kettlebell here, will do either a kettlebell or a dumbbell and let me get this box out of the way here. We will just be working on good form and good technique with a basic goblet squat. Pushing the hips back, standing straight up. Pushing the hips back into a squat, standing straight up. So we've got body weight squat, and then we've got goblet squat. Now after goblet squat, I'll either move into a double kettlebell squat, or into a goblet box squat. So depending on the athlete, depending on if they're strong and need heavier weight, if they're stronger and need heavier weight and their form is coming along, we'll go to a double front squat with kettlebells or with dumbbells. So one in each side in the rack position, sitting down, standing up, down, and up. Now, if you have an athlete whose form does not look that good, but they're ready to move up in weight, that's when we move to a box. Now, box squat, we're going to take, now for somebody my height, I use a 16 inch box. I have very long legs, so I use a 16 inch tall box. When we box squat, we teach nice, easy seat on the box, relax the hips for a split second, Explode up. So in real time, down, up, down, up, and repeat. It's going to give them a better idea of where parallel is. And it's also going to teach them to relax the hips and then fire those hips. Explode up with those hips to come off that box. From there, we'll move into a double kettlebell box squat or a double kettlebell free squat, which we just showed you. Double kettlebell box squat, double kettlebell free squat. 
Once that is taught, the intermediate athletes will be taken care of. Then and only then do we move on to a 45 pound straight bar or to a cambered squat bar or safety bar, yoke bar, whatever you have in your weight room. Now, the progressions will vary in length of time depending on the flexibility of your athlete, how quickly they learn and pick up on these positions, and also it's going to vary on their experience in the weight room. If you have somebody who has some squatting experience, they might only be doing body weight squats for one to two weeks or one to two days in the weight room. They might move right from body weight squats right into a goblet squat on their first day. It's going to vary, but good rule of thumb, because I know you guys are going to be looking for a good rule of thumb, somebody who's brand new, who's never squatted before, typically what we see, that's going to be an eighth grader or a high school freshman who didn't do football, hasn't really spent any time in the weight room or in a, a local gym or like a you know, public gym, we're going to do body weight squats for one week. After body weight squats, we move into a goblet squat without the box for about one to two weeks. We'll try to increase weight for about one to two weeks. After one to two weeks of uh, goblet squats while we increase weight, we'll then go on to a goblet box squat with a very heavy weight. After the goblet box squat for a week or two with very heavy weight, we will move on to a double kettlebell free squat without the box. Again, trying to increase weight, trying to push the athlete with good form and technique, of course. After that, we'll move into a double kettlebell front squat onto the box. So sitting down, relaxing for that split second, exploding back up, turning the hips off, turning the hips back on again, exploding off that box. We'll do that for about another two weeks, increasing weight as we do it. Then and only then will we move on to using a straight bar and start light on the straight bar and increase. Now, what's this going to do? It's going to solve two problems. Number one, if you have an overcrowded weight room, your athletes will learn to squat properly with good form and good technique when they are you know, just starting out using equipment that does not involve a power rack and does not involve a squat rack. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to free up time for your experienced athletes so that the experienced athletes, your juniors and seniors who have been squatting with you now for a couple of years, they can just jump right into that squat rack without having to load and unload plates for the younger guys, lower and raise the bar for, lower, for younger guys. Um, it's going to save a ton of time in the weight room and it's going to make this thing a very well-oiled machine. Give you an idea, it's max week this week. All of our athletes are maxing out on the yoke bar, or the, or the uh, safety squat bar, to see exactly where they're at at this point. Now, beginner athletes are right here doing their box squats, or they're right here doing their body weight squats, or doing their goblet style squats. Intermediate athletes are working in with the athletes who are maxing out with their squat, but they're doing on the box double kettlebells, they're going right in rhythm. So we're starting to transition the beginners into the, in, the intermediate level, the intermediate level into the advanced level, and even the advanced guys are broken up where we have some guys who are using heavier weight, they're trying to come in and train together. Some guys that are using lighter weight are trying to come in and train together. We split it up, we strategically place athletes together so that they are not overcrowding the weight room, but they're still getting a really programmed, scheduled, kick-ass workout. So hopefully, guys, for the people that are asking questions, how do you progress, how do you teach how to squat, this answers your question. And for the coaches that have overcrowded weight rooms and are running out of space and don't think they have enough you know, equipment to coach their athletes, hopefully this answers your question too. All right, guys, thanks so much for those questions. Make sure you keep them coming. Make sure you share these posts on Facebook. We're right in the, in the heat of track season. Our first couple of meets have gone by. You guys should be really looking to work toward a program to peak you for a specific time at the end of the season. If you have any questions about peaking, if you have any questions about training, or anything else about throwing, make sure you leave those questions below this video in the YouTube comments section. All right? Talk to you soon.